I want to talk about Yaku Perez. Uh, bring bring him back into the conversation here. Uh, Ecuador just had some uh, the first round of their elections in February, in early February, where uh, Lenin Moreno did not win. Uh, the yeah, go go figure. The CIA and IMF backed candidate uh, did not win. The anti Assange candidate did not win. He had an eight percent approval rating. And who he was going up against was a a a, um, a pro worker socialist, a pro Assange socialist uh, named Andre Arauz. I think that's how you pronounce it. I, I apologize if I'm not doing a great job pronouncing these names, uh, but uh, that's that's who won the by a landslide, right? And then second place was I think a banker that was connected to Coca Cola. Uh, and third place was the so-called eco-socialist from the indigenous political party, Yaku Perez. Now, Yaku Perez isn't as left-wing as he claims to be. Now, he comes out saying that he's an eco-socialist, he's all about the environment, uh, this, that, and the third. But as we covered um, a few weeks ago, uh, he is he's kind of a CIA plant to, to, to be this quote-unquote eco-socialist, right? Because... Uh, Perez is uh, is pro coup. He was he was uh, for the coup in Bolivia, for the coup in Venezuela. Uh, he's pro CIA. Uh, he's backed by the CIA and various different pro coup NGOs. Uh, and he has been a vocal antagonist of uh, Rafael Correa and a vocal antagonist of Julian Assange. And not just that, but he's shunned by the South American indigenous groups. Uh, especially those in positions of leadership, because he's been calling for American intervention of uh, of, of South American countries, especially South American countries that uh, that that have socialist leaders that win in in legitimate democratic elections that the international um, election obser observers have said are like some of the best election systems that are out there, right? Venezuela, Jimmy Carter even said Venezuela's elections are more legitimate than America's elections are. They have more parties in, in a country like Venezuela. They have more parties in, in Ecuador. Um, there, there is, you know, there is still fuckery, but the fuckery is coming from U.S. intervention, CIA intervention. Um, you know, there is, there is corporate oligarchy in these countries. There is neoliberalism in these countries. But, because they have more parties, they have more options, and they get to hear more voices, um, or or at least that is the idea, is they get to hear more voices. But Yaku Perez has shunned all of the socialist leaders, shunned all of the indigenous leaders that, ha that also line up with socialist ideologies, and has called for um, coups in Venezuela, Nicaragua, Honduras, Bol Bolivia, because that's what he wants. He wants American intervention in these countries, right? He claims that he's for the environment, but he's also pro-capitalist. So how can you be an eco-socialist and still say that, well, capitalism is great and it works really well. It's it's a, a system that lo is looking for infinite profits on a finite planet. Like, how can you make that claim? It just doesn't work that way. So... um. He claims that the elections were rigged because Andre Aruz won by a landslide. Go figure, in a country that was led by basically a, a CIA toady, an IMF toady, that sold out Julian Assange for $4 billion from the IMF, uh, would lose, right? Like a country that was being targeted by, uh, it was, was, was basically targeting sorry targeting a free speech activist uh, a free speech publisher mm, go figure they don't want that person in charge go figure they don't want anybody that has a neoliberal background in charge go figure they don't want the banker they don't want the fake uh, fake eco-socialist uh, they want somebody that's legitimate they want somebody that's a, a, a real lefty right and andrea ruse comes from uh, the the Korea line of thinking and Korea had his problems. I, I I addressed that in in previous videos. Is his he had his problems. He was, um, you know, uh, he he was kind of not great to the indigenous community. But Andrea Ruz is is picking up where Korea left off, fixing some of the errors that Korea had. He's learning from his past leader, right? So 
Aruz wins by a landslide. Yaku Perez places third, and now there's going to be a runoff election in a couple weeks. And Aruz, uh, because he came third, and it's like unfathomable to him that a fake eco socialist, a pseudo fucking leftist, uh, pro capitalist, pro CIA candidate would lose in Ecuador. It's like, what the fuck am I paying the CIA for? Right? <laughs> that they can't even. They can't even get this coup correctly. Come on, guys. Uh, so he claims, you know, he's mad because he won't be in the runoffs. He's not eligible to be in the runoff on April 11th. So he's basically coming out and saying, well, now there needs to be military intervention of the elections because, well, the elections were rigged. They were rigged. I, I, I didn't win. I didn't even come in second place. So it must be rigged, right? Like this is like the kid in the playground that uh, that the parents all are like, oh, you're so special and you're wonderful and you're the fucking best and nobody's better than you. So nobody can beat you in sports. Nobody can beat you in games. And then what happens? They they lose at the sport. They lose at the board game and they go, well, well, that's not possible. My mommy and daddy told me I'm special. My mommy and daddy told me that I'm the best. My mommy and daddy told me I'm the smartest. So it's not possible. So somebody cheated here. Somebody cheated. I'm going to call the cops. That's basically what he's doing. I'm going to call the cops and 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 arrest all you people for cheating at this game for cheating at this thing that 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 I'm not good at for because I'm not good at it it must everybody must be cheating that's the way that he's he's acting right now this is a very childish way to go about dealing with this and so he calls for military intervention he says the military needs to come in uh and and be observers to make sure that you know oh people aren't voting twice for Andre Aruz which again all those fucking claims in any country have been proven false time and time again. Like it's very, very difficult for you to go cast your vote twice uh, in 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 America or in Ecuador or what ha what have you. Uh, again, what is possible and what has been proven is possible is is how the DNC and how the RNC, the Democrats and Republicans in America, uh, manipulate elections. We we saw the story out of Time Magazine about how. DNC uh, a in a um, advisor to the AFL CIO advisor to the president of the AFL CIO uh, basically created shadow campaigns similar to what what happened with the Mercers and Cambridge Analytica for Trump uh, to try to get Biden elected. We saw that. We also know that uh, there there is election fraud in the primaries when it comes to the Democrats. Right, the Democrats will come out and and they'll uh, use proprietary software so you can't confirm that your vote was actually cast for who you want to cast for this proprietary software has algorithms that turn you know every fifth vote for Bernie Sanders to a Biden vote every fourth vote for Elizabeth Warren to to Bloomberg we saw that we that was proven and the only people that can see and verify these votes and verify the election are the DNC are the corporations. We know that's possible. Now you in introduce the military into something like that and all hell will fucking break loose. Now, I'm not saying this is exactly like all of those levels of election fraud is what's going on in Ecuador. Um, Ecuador, I, I, I don't know the ins and outs of the Ecuador election system. Like Venezuela's election system is you bring your ID, you get checked in, you... Um, you cast your vote on a on a machine. That machine prints out a receipt, so you know who you voted for. You have a paper trail of, you know, this is who I voted for. If that receipt says something different, then you can go in and and um, uh, fight that. Right? You can you can co try to correct that, but that's not where it ends. Then you go in, and before you leave the polling station, you use a paper ballot to verify what you've already verified. So now you get a receipt as a verification and you get a paper ballot that they can count and make sure that the voting machines aren't, you know, stripping people of their uh, of their votes. This is what needs to be done in America. If you want to have an electronic system, then great. Then there needs to be a receipt that gives you a verification and you need to vote on a paper ballot and you need to do the exit polls so that all of this stuff can be double check and triple check to make sure that people's votes are actually being counted for who they voted for. Right. And it's not being controlled by some 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 fucking proprietary dark software. Now, Perez's justification for military intervention of of the uh, February 7th election. Is uh, that the soldiers can give clarity to the election. Well, 
motherfuckers, there's already clarity to the election, right? There's already clarity to the election. Andre Arauz won by a landslide and you came in third, motherfucker. Like, you're just being a sore loser. You don't need to call the military to come in. And he's backed by some, uh, like, right-wing Christian fundamentalist that used to be a pastor but now is, like, this right-wing commentator in, in Ecuador. And that guy's like, yeah, we should we should see if the military can come in and, and like, confirm election integrity and shit. Uh, which, again, super bad idea. And and it could, this goes into why, right? Because the, the next statement he says is, oh, I'm calling for the military. Uh, a lot of people are chastising me for it. But what I'm calling for is election integrity. I'm actually trying to strengthen democracy by military rule, which has never been the case. Anytime the military gets involved, anytime the military takes over the leadership, it always leads to the fascist state, right? So him coming out and being like, oh, I'm calling for the military to check in on this election to provide clarity and to strengthen our democracy, says the pseudo-fascist. No, no person that's ever been democratically minded was like, yeah, we need to have the military presence in polling stations and watching over the polls to make sure that people are, are voting for who they, who they should be voting for. So great. So you want to use the military to bully people into voting for you. Because because nobody legitimately wanted to fucking vote for you. You came in third place, which good for you, man. You came in third place. Take the take that take that bronze and and go home. You know, like become a fucking I don't know, become a commentator on Ecuador's version of MSNBC. Because I'm sure they'd love you on there. Again, usually when the military gets involved in cases like this, it's. It's usually a military dictatorship. Look at what Jair Bolsonaro wants to do. Jair Bolsonaro is a legitimate authoritarian. He's a legitimate uh, fucking uh, dictator, right, in Brazil. He's this neoliberal dictator, and he wants to bring back the military rule in Brazil. Like, he was calling for military rule in Brazil. So the quote-unquote eco-socialist, the indigenous leftist, is doing what the right-wing authoritarian wants to do. But he still claims that he's a leftist and, a, and, and oh, this is all for the championing of democracy. Bullshit. Your actions are juxtaposed to what your words are. Now, Perez claims that uh, Correa and a right winger by the name of Jamie Nebo uh, control the National Electoral Council or CNE, which is also false because the president of the CNE in Ecuador is from Perez's party is from the indigenous party that he represents. That's who the president of this 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 National Electoral Council is, right? So his claim that all oh, these Korea folks have come in and they've infiltrated this thing and and now they're 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 bending the votes, they're they're changing votes uh for Andre Arauz and blah 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 and and it's like you what are you talking about? First and foremost, the president of, of this this uh the, the this electoral council that you're talking about is part of your party. Second of all, where's the proof that votes were actually changed? But that's the other thing, right? He actually doesn't have any proof, period. He doesn't have any proof that uh, that the odds were stacked against him. For fuck's sake, you had CIA, the CIA was backing you up. NGOs from America was backing you up. I bet the IMF was even backing you up and you still couldn't fucking pull this shit off. It means that you lost. It means that people don't really give a shit about your 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 fake lefty politics. They probably see through your facade. So, you know, too bad, man. You didn't win. I think you should go home. I think you should take the L, be graceful, and fucking go home, right? Now, here's the crazy thing is like Moreno, who also didn't win, uh, eight percent fucking approval rating. Lenin Moreno. Uh, he has an extreme bias towards um, Rafael Correa, so he basically removed uh, any mention of Correa. You're not allowed to mention Rafael Correa. You, you can't use any images of Rafael Correa during the um, during the campaign during the elections, right? So again, it's like 
all these guys seem to sit there and say, oh, well, you know, I'm pro democracy. I'm for the I'm, I'm for the voice of the people to be reflected. And then when the voice of the people is reflected, they do some they call for some authoritarian shit. And then they and then they go, well, I don't understand why someone that's pro democracy like me, Lennon Moreno, doesn't win. Well, it's like, motherfucker, you banned you banned the former president's image from being shown during the election. You know what that signifies? It signifies that you're like an authoritarian dictator. You you uh, you sold out a fucking journalist for four billion dollars from the IMF so that he would go and be tortured in prison because you didn't want him to be in your in, in your embassy, which he has the legal right to be in. Motherfucker, you're you're an authoritarian. You ain't no fucking dem champion of democracy. And by the way, people like Yaku Perez and Lena Moreno are who the United States backs up. The United States backs up people like these fake leftists like Moreno, like uh, uh, Yaku Perez. So remind me again. Remind me again how America is all about championing democracy abroad. Because they're champion, who they're putting up, who they're propping up, aren't people that are legitimately trying to have uh, free, fair elections with with actual integrity, with actual transparency. They're they're backing up people who want to imprison journalists, who want to get rid of the image of a former president, and call for military intervention of elections. Remind me again how America is for democracy abroad. You can't. There's no legitimate defense you can make to say, oh, America is a champion of democracy at home or abroad. There's infinite amounts of proof to show that. So we'll see what happens with this. I doubt that there's actually going to be any sort of military intervention in Ecuador. I think the people of Ecuador have made their decision. They want Andre Arauz. Uh, he, is, he has legally won the election. Um, and Yaku Perez is just, you know, he's he's just what he's doing is he's creating fodder um, for corporate media to use during the Biden administration. And and if you remember, the Biden administration has already said that Juan Guaido, who is uh, who is not the president of Venezuela, is the president of Venezuela. Most Venezuelans don't know who Juan Guaido is. They only know him because America is propping him up. He was he was built in a think tank, a conservative think tank at Georgetown. In America, Joe Biden is like, this guy's the president. So a country that had better elections than America did uh, with less controversy somehow is is not legally electing their president. And they're going to do the same thing here. They they tried to do a coup in Bolivia that failed. They, they're going to try to do a coup here with Yaku Perez that's going to fail. They failed in Honduras. They failed in Venezuela. Hopefully what won't happen is they won't ramp up, you know, who knows, maybe maybe Biden will do this. They don't ramp up tensions a lot more and try to talk about military and American military intervention. But again, this is all fodder to that. Right. It, it kind of gives people like MSNBC can pick this up and be like, well, maybe it could be America. The, 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 the socialists are winning so we can we, we have to intervene. Right. Like, they uh, well, they're calling for the military in their own country. You know, oh, the people have spoken. Yeah, the people have spoken to fucking elect a socialist. So maybe you should shut the fuck up and stay out of their country. Maybe you should shut the fuck up and stop interfering in other countries' elections. It's it's kind of like he's he's calling for fraud with no evidence. And it's kind of like he learned from the DNC, right? He learned from the Democrats that are like, oh, Russia did it. Where's the proof? I don't, who gives a shit? Russia did it. What's that? There's a power outage in Chicago. Ru but fucking Russia. They got to Chicago. Oh, man. This is all just fallout of the Cold War. This is, uh, you know, and, and now what they'll do is they'll, if Arauz does, be, it, it, when he does get uh, the presidency, because there's a very good likelihood that he's going to win, uh, they'll put sanctions on Ecuador. They'll use economic war on Ecuador and be like, oh, see, see, the socialist can't take care. Well, you're not allowing him to to do what he actually can do if he wasn't shackled by American economic sanctions. 
like America has has such a contempt for the working class that they need to they need to globally destroy the working class. <laughs> That's what American imperialism is all about. All right, let's look at some comments. Yeah, Holly says it's, uh, he's definitely a plant. Yeah, all all the signs shows that Perez is pseudo left. That's what the gray zone called him. Uh, uh, coups fail all over Latin America. Yeah, they've they've failed nonstop, nonstop. Uh, many other countries uh, are more dem uh, countries have a more democratic electoral process than U.S. Venezuela's elections are fair. Yeah, they, their elections. I mean, the level of security and integrity and checks and transparencies that they have is far greater than what the United States has, you know? So what we should do is learn from them and try to use that for our elections. But we didn't, we just demonized and chastised and put economic sanctions on them and claim that their legally elected president is not the president. And most of the other countries are like, Hey, you, I don't think you guys can, this is not how democracy works. So yeah, interim president Guaido. Yeah. That's what they call him. Um, not to mention the Bay of Pigs, which, yeah, I don't know the full history behind that. I need to, I need to, to, to do my research in, in learning about the history of Bay of Pigs. But yeah, that, that seemed like there was some fuckery at play there too. <laughs> uh, Sarah, good to see you over on Rockfin. Thanks for joining the stream. Uh, Sarah, she, she got the ticket for the show. Yay. Thank you, Sarah. That was awesome. Uh, you are a peach and a half, and and I uh, hope you enjoy the show when you come and hang out with us. Uh, so, cool. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this content, uh, please make sure that you hit the like button, hit the share button, and make sure you're subscribed to my channel, whether it's on Rockfin, YouTube, or Facebook, especially Facebook and YouTube. They often uncensor pe uh, un unsubscribe people and they censor this content. So if you want to keep up to date, make sure you're subscribed. Hit that bell button so you get notifications of when I'm putting up new videos and when I am going live. I usually go live uh, on uh, Fridays and on Mondays. Uh, and if you want more information about a, a bunch of the other stuff that I do, um, whether it's my Forkful of Noodles podcast, the Taboo Table Talk interview podcast, or the Road Reflections live streams, uh, make sure you go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. There you'll find past episodes of, uh, of various shows that I, uh, that I do, as well as information about when I'll be performing live virtual comedy shows the forkful of noodles live virtual comedy shows uh the dates and tickets will be available directly on my website but if you're also on financial stable ground you can help contribute to the show financially by making a one-time donation or becoming a sustaining member which gets you free tickets and bonus content and go to krishmohanhaha.com slash donate to to make any kind of financial contributions but if you can't it's not a necessity most of my stuff is available for free and for everybody to enjoy. So again, go to krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. -H -H -A, and I hope to see you at the next video.